Hey guys, welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. My name's James. Today, what we're going to be doing in the next two videos, we're going to be talking about adding a radiator to a heating system. Watch me find out where we're going to tee into the existing system, build the wall up, get the pipes down to where they need to be, and then get our stubs out in the right positions, plus how to plan good anchorage points if you're making a new wall, and having a chat about the tools that I'm using to do this. Remember, all the tools I use in this video are available on the Amazon store. Then in the second video, we'll hang the radiator on the wall and we'll talk about balancing the heating system out, getting it ready for this new radiator to be added on to the current system. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video guys and remember, if there's one thing you've got to do, that's hold tap. Remember to visit our interactive house at plumberparts.co.uk to learn more about the plumbing in your home. So then guys, what the plan is, is we're gonna build a stud wall and I just want you to know I'm being watched by my tabby cat, Georgie, still here with his stubby little tail that I chopped off in the door. Ooh. Sorry, George. Wait. George. <laughs> so yeah, what we've got above us, we've got a radiator, very small radiator above us, and we've got two 15 mil pipes that actually drop down from 22 to 15 mil to feed that radiator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down these two pipes here, and because I wanna cover this sliding door here inside a false wall, I'm giving myself the perfect opportunity to hide those two pipes that feed it down inside the studding that I'm going to build up here, okay? Also, I'm going to be doing something that not a lot of chippies do, even though I repeatedly ask them to do it on site, uh, and that's to consider some anchorage points when we're building the wall up. Now, I understand that if you are going to be doing this on a wall that's already built, this is going to be quite difficult to do. In fact, virtually impossible. But because we're building a stud wall up here from scratch, why don't we make it easy for ourselves to attach a radiator to the wall when the wall is finished. So first up, let's pop upstairs and I'll show you the higgledy piggledy pipe work, which is an English saying, and uh, show you how we're gonna hopefully connect to that and how we're gonna find out where our holes are and all that sort of stuff. So I've already whipped the radiator off up here. Now the system is actually filled up again and running at the moment. I actually think the sliding door is about here going that way. So we're in a really good position to be able to figure out, hmm, where are we gonna be Drilling, hmm, where are we going to be going? And making sure that we get these two pipes in. Now, you can't see it very well at the moment, but we've got a spur that's on here, like so. This is in 22 millimeter just there, and that spur carries on through there. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get this floorboard lifted up, and then we can get our holes drilled down downstairs so we know roughly where we're going through, roughly guessing how far away from the wall we are, trying to get into this cavity part here. If that happens, then we're on to a winner. What we are going to do, so this is our flow and return here for the heating. Now, back in the day, it would have mattered which way round. We'd have been like, which one is the flow, which one is the return. We'd have put the heating system on. We'd have tried to fill these pipes to see which was which. But nowadays, it doesn't matter so much because we have a thing called universal TRVs, and that is a thermostatic radiator valve that has an arrow either pointing to itself or away from itself to denote that it doesn't matter which way round the flow of the TRV is. Back in the day, if you'd have put it on the wrong way round, as the TRV started to shut, you'd have started to hear like whistling or drumming, something like that to indicate that something was wrong. I mean, what I'd like to do now is we just want to sort of pick this away. Ooh, this is where we get a little bit of dust going on. Just love dust. And we'll see down there, that is roughly where we're hoping to come up in a minute. So what I did upstairs, rather than measuring from the end wall, I thought, actually, I know where these pipes drop down, the fly and return for our secondary return system. I can measure from those pipes across and that was 80 centimetres. So that means we should be looking to make a little investigative hole just there. So the other thing I want to do is I know that my wall is going to be sort of roughly this wide. So I kind of want to give myself a little bit of a, a sort of distance width to go from. So really, I'm going to want to drill my hole here. But let's pop this up. Right, let's go and have a look upstairs. And see what we can find. You guys can't see it very well, but look, it's right there. That is the end of our screwdriver sticking through. Hey, hey, magic, we're all good. Right, so now I know where that's coming out. I'm just going to trim out some of this lath plaster, clear it all up in here with my uh, multi tool. <laughs> right, so now we can see exactly where our screw's coming through. We've cleared this cavity out. We can now go back downstairs, make these holes a little bit bigger. We know we're quite safe to do that from underneath now. And then we can work downstairs to get our radiator and everything measured out. Right, 
Right, there we go, two holes drilled. Right then, so it's time for us to meet the radiator that we're putting in. I've actually used this in another video and I bought this ages ago to shove onto this, the uh, house here. So it's finally going to be back in its resting place. The main thing we wanna know about it is its rough width, 45 centimeters, so 450 mil. The center to center height, which is about 1730. Once we know that, we can then plan out roughly where we want to put it on our wall back through there. But I'm just gonna write those measurements down first before I forget them. Oh yes. When it comes to our studding, we are gonna to have to do a certain thing because obviously a width of a board is 1200, so we wanna leave 400 mil centers for our studs, standard. Now I've asked my darling wife, who is out of shot, and I've also asked Big G, where do they want the radiator? And the general consensus is that it's gonna be up towards this end here. Then you can have a look at the position of it. You can say, right, I know I've got to put a single socket in here uh, and I can go and grab one or something that's a similar width and just lay that down here and go, right, does that work? You know, if that's going there, I'm probably gonna have the width of a stud there. Will that fit inside that? Yes, it will. Will I be able to get my pipes out past that? It might be a little bit tight. So let's just move it over a little bit, give ourselves just a little bit more room. And then we know then that our radiator is roughly gonna be going here. You see I'm marking the floor as well, where our stud's gonna go. The reason we're doing this is because what I wanna do when we build our stud work wall, I wanna actually put a couple of noggins in to take the weight of the radiator. I don't wanna have to rely on plasterboard fixings on their own. I wanna be able to integrate a slab of wood to go into this to make sure that this happens okay. So let's get on with doing a bit of woodwork, which is, let's face it, super, super easy. <laughs> So just measuring out and getting that bottom plate in, it's the sort of first thing to go for me. Uh, obviously, I'm not a chippy, but this is the way I like to do it. You probably noticed I've now got my brand new Bosch SDS Beast and I've also upgraded my impact driver as well. Everything's looking wicked, but you wait until you see my chop saw in a sec. You're gonna go mental. By the way, remember to click the join button for the AL Army live streams, exclusive behind the scenes content, and to flex your spanner rank emoji in the comments section below. Right, so I'm getting my top plate in now and we're working our way up off that. I really, really wish I had my laser here. I've ordered a laser online and it hasn't arrived yet. I'm just waiting for it to get here. Oh, and if I did have it, this would be super easy, but it's at the moment it's all wedging and stuff like that. But what I've done, I've marked the two holes here where we're gonna be coming out and I'm gonna drill two slightly larger holes in this plate here, ready to receive our pipes as it comes down. Now, I'm gonna probably be working back from here. So 1200. Ooh, we're probably just gonna miss it. <laughs> that'll be wicked if we do. The thing is, right, 1200 is the standard width for a bit of plasterboard, for a sheet of plasterboard. And we wanna try and keep our holes away from that. And they're just coming inside there at the moment. So that means these two pipes I'll be able to set over onto a bit of stud, drop them down so they're nicely tied out of the way. And that's really important with the moving window in the background. Um, and then bring them through, pop them through the stud there and out ready, centered up ready for our radiator. <laughs> Yes, guys, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, he's not a chippy. Why has he got one of these? But I'll tell you what. <laughs> what an absolute beast. I had another chop saw and I've had it ages and I got rid of it and it made me, I was like, I wanna get some new bits and pieces, some new gear. And I've been buying in some Bosch stuff. Now, number one, the reason I thought I'd get that is this 12 amp hour battery. And this is a battery one run beast. Just slots in there like that, easy peasy. Even though, yesterday, I did test running it on a four amp power little baby battery and it worked fine there as well, so I was quite happy with that. Look, don't get me wrong, I don't wanna talk about the tools that I'm using, I just really like this. You can flip these out, and some of you chippies might be like, oh, that's totally normal, bruv. I don't know, you know, it's one of those things, isn't it? You might also say, how do you feel qualified as a plumber to talk about a tool like this? Well, I did build my own house and I also built the studio that we film in and I also built my office at the end of the garden, which is also a gym that I haven't been using for a little while. <laughs> well, I should have used it a lot more. I've been using the kitchen that I built quite a lot too. The room that I'm in now I built. That's why that bit up there's not finished. It's that time everybody, just to appreciate some sexy tools. If you want to buy the tools that you see in this video, head over to our Amazon store and buy stuff with reckless abandon before Christmas. Or better still, tell your wife. What is it about your tools that make my wallet cringe from you? 
I know I probably shouldn't be near a job, so But here we are now One knocking, two knocking, three knocking, four I put a sulfate on the floor I got these studs up to the ceiling Nice and punk, you feel this feeling? And gang doing the impossible there, showing you that plumbers can also do carpentry. Uh, and a nice little bit of carpentry I think it is as well. I mean, it's probably not 100% standard. I put a double sole in it at the bottom. Then I covered over my marks by accident, so I've now got to redo those quickly. But we've still got our two pipe holes coming out of here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna bring our two pipes down in plastic. We're gonna pop through here and then round and across out to where our radiator is. A couple of considerations we want to think about. Usually what I do, if this is going to be a proper bit of studying, I'd insulate all this, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm not worried about there being any like a drum effect from this. I'm going to be bracing these bits along here to take the rate of our radiator, to take the weight of our radiator. Good idea if you're doing this, just pop a couple of blocks of wood down, depending on where you're working. That'll just give you a little bit of height to work on this rad. If it's a tall radiator, if it's 1800 high, you're gonna to wanna to put a blanking plug in. Now, the reason for that is, if we actually look closely, the blanking plug will go in like this, and then it'll get sandwiched right in when we actually put our first gasket union on. Uh, they usually get sandwiched just behind there. So look, there it goes in like that, and then pops in, then does up, and we're all good. The reason for that is, is if we don't do that, what tends to happen is water will just rush across the bottom of the radiator and leave the rad, and you'll end up with columns that aren't hot, you'll, and you'll just end up with issues like that. For those, of you, for those of you who haven't watched the video yet, this is an Aladdin auto vent. This allows us to vent the radiator automatically. This will shut and stop water coming out. They're very good. This is the cartridge version. These are brilliant. I really like these because they just allow you to just vent away, you don't have to worry about it. You can just leave this lot filling up and it will just do it itself. I have done uh, videos on this as well. So I'll leave a link to this video all about Aladdin Auto Events in the description below. Now there's a few considerations as well. Consider your skirting board. Just pop a bit down if you like, there. And then just whip a line across like that. And then that will get, so that'll give you an idea of what's the lowest point. Now, straight away, I think, well, we're probably getting a little bit tight there now. We're gonna have to bring this up. So if we go to about here, bottom of the radiator is there. We know we're well clear of any bits of barbs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just whack a noggin in now. And I know exactly where the center of it needs to be. And my, my, my noggin is gonna be quite a large bit of wood, quite flat, and it's gonna be slightly above these pipe bits, okay? Because I know that my brackets for the bottom are actually gonna be up here. So what I want to do is put a nice big bit of six by two in or something like that, just so we've got a good noggin plate there. And that is an absolutely amazing anchor point for a radiator. A nice way of doing this, if you don't want to faff about with the tape measure, it's totally up to you. You can put a piece of wood exactly on the height where you want the radiator to be, lift it up, and then you've got an exact measurement for you to put in your top noggin, just like I had to do it. Right then, gang, now that we've got those two in, why don't we just temporarily hang this radiator up, and then we can first fix our pipes so they stick out as near to where we think they're gonna stick out, and then we can also do our measurements up and across so we can then get our plasterboard on. Right then, everyone, I'm just gonna hang the radiator temporarily here. Now, I know some of you are gonna be like, oh, I wanna know how to measure the brackets out. I'll be showing you how to do that in the next video. So have no fear. The reason we're putting it up now is so we can get our exact pipe centers for our first fix. I like to have my pipes come out and then go up in, purely because I want to put a drain off valve, because this is what we call a drop down leg radiator. So once we put this radiator in, we could drain all the rest of the system out, but this leg wouldn't drain. That's why we want to put a drain off down there. You always need to do that on drop down leg rads. Even if I was going to have a drop down leg and feed a radiator here and a radiator there, I wouldn't be able to do that without having that drain off, because someone's going to come along one day, slacking that nut off, thinking the whole system's drained out, and they're gonna get a bit of a surprise because this whole radiator is gonna be full of water. 
Right then, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using these nifty little beasts from Butteline. We're going to run our two pipes down here and across to where we need them. And then these, quite simply, just clamp on their ends like that. And that's pretty much it, it's done. So let me just get my holes drilled first. That's the first thing I've got to do. Give myself a big old hole drill. And I'm leaving a little cubby hole at the other end to get in here and give it a good clear out every so often. Bit of gaffer over the end, just stops any debris going into the pipe. Feed that beast on through. Feeding, feeding, feeding. Right, and we've got a bit of movement either way, so I'm happy to get this. Now, I like to do these and just give it a little twist. That's that one cut now. And then standard bit of butte line here. I now know that I can just leave this here. I can actually hang my head over the edge of this and mark this centre here. And then we know what all I've got to do after that is get an elbow on here. I can actually file off this chrome and solder an elbow on, which is what I might do. Or I can put a compression on. Right then guys, so now we've got the radiator up, we've got our pipes in. I mean, these can't move anywhere. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna make up a quick map on a piece of paper so I know exactly where all my fixing points are, where my studs are and everything like that. So once I've got my first bit of plaster walled up on here, uh, I don't lose track of where I've gone or anything like that. It's quite easy to do. It's a more a matter of measuring over points and then measuring up points and you're all good pretty much. So it also means now that I can take this radiator off We'll just pop it over here out of the way and then we can get our first bit of plasterboard up. As always along the way, have a little bit of a clear up and also the box that I drew all those measurements from, I've already lost, so I've got to go and look for that. But we're nearly at the end of the job now, just gonna fill this up. And this is the bit I love doing actually, get a bit of plasterboard in and then make it look all neat so the plasterboarding dude, my mate Matt, will come along and go, you are a better tacker than tackers are. So there you go guys, all done, well, all done for now anyway. The plasterer doesn't come in until Saturday. So the second half of this video, the bit that I wanna show you doing the second fix, which will be the connections here, the connections at the top, and also the balancing of the system if it's needed, uh, and also the tweaking of the pump. There's a lot of things you can do to get a new radiator to work. Also in that video, I'll talk to you about how many radiators you should fit on 22 mil or 15 mil because there's kind of a limit and it won't take me long but you know come back for the next video for that um george is happy oh hey george george yeah look he's well chuffed uh emily's happy as well aren't you emily of course she is. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video today, guys. Please click on the join button if you want to come for AL Army live streams. They'd have already seen all this happening already because they get exclusive content if they are an exclusive content banded person. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, really pleased with how this has gone. I know not 100% of it is plumbing based, but sometimes it's just nice for you to see, you know, how I think out stuff. And if you're a chippy, go, oh my God, I can't believe he's done that. I'd never do that. Or if you're a dry liner, be like, oh, I hate dry lining. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. I'll see you in the next Plumber Parts video. There's one thing you've got to do. I think George knows what it is. George, do you know what it is? Let me get him. Oh, look at his little belly. <laughs> what is it we've got to do, G? I think you know. I think it is hold tight and scrub that little wabblety belly. <laughs> see you soon, guys. So then everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I'm recording this voiceover, my mate Matt should be coming in tomorrow to get all that done. So with any luck next week, we'll have the second half of this video ready. Please hit the join button. Please hit the subscribe, like and comment below. And if you are part of the Al Army Massive, go and flex your emojis in the comments section below.